I've driven Aston Martins under just about every single condition in the world. Driven in the city, highway, track, mountains, canyons. We've even driven them on the German Autobahn. But uh, this for me is a world's first. It's 20 degrees, I'm up in the Rockies in Crested Butte, Colorado, and I'm at a Aston Martin's Ice Driving School, and it promises to be a ton of fun. Pirouetting across polished ice in a $300,000 sports coupe is typically an avoided all cost maneuver. In most cases, it results in disastrous carnage as pricey carbon fiber and aluminum alloy crumble with the ensuing impact. But that's not going to happen this time, I say with utmost confidence, because I've traveled all the way to spectacular Crested Butte, Colorado to drive a fleet of brand new Aston Martins on a man-made ice track under very controlled conditions. Best case, I learned more than a few things about balance, patience, and car control. Worst case, my fingers and toes get frostbitten. Aston Martin launched its inaugural on-ice program in 2014 with the goal of offering drivers the chance to hone their behind-the-wheel skills on a private, custom-built ice track. The British automaker supplies nearly everything, including a range of its gorgeous aluminum alloy vehicles, each equipped with toasty heated seats and all the other creature comforts. Attendees include current customers, potential customers, and avid enthusiasts. Each pays $2,000 and up for the experience to drive on the frozen circuit, choosing one of several programs that meets their fancy. The full program comes with a private concierge and a menu of activities, including skiing, snowmobiling, and sledding. Aston Martin has done things its way, and by that, I mean correctly. The frozen circuit is a meticulously prepared cow pasture that has undergone many months of preparation for its seasonal winter roll. To prepare its rear-wheel drive cars for the new Arctic mission, Aston Martin removes the summer compound tires and mounts a fresh set of Pirelli or Bridgestone snow tires on factory alloys. That's it. Everything else, from fluids to brake pads, are left completely stock. The program begins with a walk before running. Think of it as a slip before a slide. After a brief in-yurt instruction, a team of veteran race and rally instructors guide everyone through a series of exercises and driving drills designed to familiarize all with the skills and patience needed to pilot a vehicle on a low friction surface. The instructed lessons include braking, slalom, and skid pad. Each is far more difficult on ice than on paved asphalt. The essence are brought to speed and stopped within a specific area. <laughs> well, that's the plan at least. Then they're surgically maneuvered through a tight slalom and rung around a wintry white skid pad which pegs the fun quotient. Smiles and grins aside, each of these exercises is designed for just one purpose. That is to prepare the students for the big track. Aston's unwritten rule says you could drive as fast as you'd like as long as you don't stuff a car into a snowbank. But in practice, most attendees start at a walking pace. The trick is patience and having a very delicate touch on the throttle. Aston Martin brought nearly its entire range of rear-wheel drive exotics to Crested Butte and, as I correctly figured, each provides slightly different driving dynamics on the ice track. The V12 models, with additional mass over the front axle, were easiest to turn in as their steering wheels chewed in the ice. Of course, their overabundant horsepower also meant plenty of rear wheel spin and oversteer, which is great for glorious sideways action. The V8 models, however, those were the most balanced in terms of grip and power, and it made them my first choice on the slick ice. With a few cautious laps under my belt, I mustered up enough talent to make it around the frozen circuit as a pace best described as a trot. It was far from a gallop. My procedure was to gain straight line speed and then carefully pitch the sports car around the next corner. But more often than not, I'd dial in too much steering and the front end would plow. But every third corner, I'd make that every fourth corner, I'd get it right. The front would bite, the nose would turn, and I could do a gentle power slide out. But once done properly and executed cleanly, the sense of accomplishment was tremendous. Woo! And there you have it. Just spent two days driving probably one of the most incredible man-made ice tracks up in the Colorado Rockies in Aston Martins. And uh, learned a lot about the car, learned a lot about my driving skills. But uh, overall, big picture, have an awful lot of fun. Thanks for watching, guys.